Welcome to the Live Side of the Dark Side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio and also all the podcast catchers, uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple, everything, everywhere you listen to podcasts. It's the Dark Mark Show. I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian. And of course, with me, my co-host, everybody's favorite vegan heavy metal DJ, Hannah Bach. Hello, guys. Hi, Hannah. I know that uh, other than things that we were discussing off the air, uh-huh. how are you? Um, you know, I can't complain. I'm still breathing. I'm alive. I haven't broken any bones. Knock on wood. How are you? Uh, well, good. I was just about to break some bones, but uh, I know that uh, last time uh, our guest was was in studio, you were supposed to be there, and you were sick and that day, and mm-hmm. Santa Claus was there, and and you just you couldn't wait for her to come back. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it was such a you, it was such a great show, and she's such a great guest, and you guys bonded over the phone, and you know how uh, we have adult film stars from time to time. We this last we last year we had. Ryder Sky, we had uh, we had uh, um, Siri Dahl, we had Alexis Allure, we had even the legendary uh, Ginger Lynn. But here is my favorite, my personal favorite adult film star still in 2021, Ella Darling. Oh gosh, you're gonna make me blush. Hello, thank you guys for having me back. And Hannah, it's nice to be on the show with you. So it's nice to be on the show with you. Yes. <laughs> We're doing it Hannah. quarantine style. <laughs> well, Ella's joining us from Austin, Texas. So that's where Ooh. basically half of LA moved to. And we're going to talk about that. But oh, yeah. uh, very true. Yeah, it's LA East. But uh, before we get started, <laughs> our sponsors really quick. We've got uh, Audible. I've got the library behind me, the Goth library behind me. But when you're in the car, you're on the road, or even if you're sitting at home, which everybody is, you know, um, you don't have time to just to sit and, and uh, read books. You got other things to do. Listen to a book. They've got everything from Shakespeare to smut. They have books on the. Uh, they have they have smutty books, Ella. I know you're oh, smart, I know. Right? Oh, Ella. I know. And uh, <laughs> actually, our past guest Sasha Gray, uh, she has an erotic novel, a couple of erotic novels that she reads on there. Uh, but also, whatever your you know, all the bestsellers, all the great biographies. Now, uh, if you go to uh, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. Not only do you get a free book, you get access to all of the Audible originals, not just one. You can download a bunch of them. You can download uh, Alien 3. You can download the, um, the uh, uh, they did a, a, a version of The Sandman with James McAvoy, whatever you want. AudibleTrial.com forward slash DMS, free book, access to all the Audible originals and a 30-day trial to Audible. You can't beat that. And um, Hannah, I don't know if uh, you're still there, but I know that uh, last time we were talking about our other sponsor, mm-hmm. do- Doomy's Home Cooking. And most of the time when we talk about that, they have no idea. Did you see that face that Ella just made? No, because I can only see, I only see you guys when you talk. Let me see if I can like flip my screen. to. See. Oh, now I can see the both of you. Now I got it. Um... Ella, Ella, talk about Doomy's Home Cooking and how great it is. Mm-hmm. I love Doomy so much. Um, I am... I eat meat now, but for like a decade or so, I was a vegetarian and Doomies was my absolute comfort food. It was so good. I think it's all vegan or at least mostly vegan, maybe a few vegetarian options. I don't recall, but it was just always so amazing. Um, the, uh, their chicken, their, uh, they, they make amazing food and it's so good. And even if you think that you hate vegetarian food, cause like you're a meat eater or whatever, like, why don't you just hear me out, try it. It is some of the most amazing, most amazing food. And that's not just most amazing vegetarian food, but just some of the best food I've ever eaten. They're what, so good. What is your favorite dessert and what is your favorite plate from Doomies? You know, it's been years since I've been there, but I think uh-huh. I used to, I think my go-to was a like a fried not chicken sandwich maybe. Uh-huh, um, yes. And the the wings were really good. Oh, Um, yeah, those are good. Yeah, no, if I if I remember correctly, there's like just this absolutely bomb chicken sandwich, and you could get like vegan ranch. And um, Mm -hmm. I I live in Texas again, so of course I eat ranch like it's uh, manna. I don't know. Um, Yeah, it's it's just so good. I love doing these. I love that they're sponsoring you guys. I do. I love you. And their jalapeno poppers are amazing. Speaking of Doomies and um, Mark, and I hope Phil's listening, um, since we're in quarantine for my, you know, my birthday's coming up, my best friend Christiana and I decided maybe we should all meet, park in the parking lot and just have 
do me's quarantine style. I'd be up for that. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. Well, that's hopefully I'll be driving my new car if I get it down there. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Well, tell, tell your boyfriend all about that. But 1253 yeah. Vine Street on the corner of Fountain Environment, if you're in LA. And by the way, Ella, they've expanded the chicken menu. They've jumped on the chicken sandwich bandwagon. Last time I was there, I had the chicken cordon bleu. Oh, wow. That sounds Delicious. nice. Better, yeah. Better than Popeyes, Benny and all these chicken sandwiches and they have a mexican restaurant next door next mm. mess the biggest plazas i ever had next time you're in la uh we're all coming we're all going to doomies and we're hanging out yeah you oh, have yeah. a double you, you have like you have like a date with us <laughs> all right i'm gonna i'm going to uh i'm gonna cash that in the threesome right. of the threesome of my vegan dreams but <laughs> Doomies and Cook at 1253 Ryan street also yes. there's one in culver city and one in toronto canada sadly not austin texas yet but uh, i'm sure it's coming Oh, hey, yeah, it's yeah. a good fit. It is a and, good fit. And support your local restaurants during this quarantine because they need it. Support uh, support your artists and support your restaurants. And also, if you need a pick me up, get some of this Ray's energy drinks. Yeah, I, that makes Mark very happy in the morning. He's wide awake, and I'm like, what? Oh yeah, I was texting her like a fiend <laughs> yesterday morning. She's like, I'm still sleepy. I'm like, I just had a raise. I'm all excited. This you, you can't get it at 7-Eleven. You can't get it at the at the at 99 cent store. Any of this. You get these at gyms, GNCs, or if you look at the uh, uh, on our uh, YouTube page or on our uh, social media or on our description in the podcast catchers, you will get a coupon for 15% off a case. I just use it myself to get a case mm -hmm. of Apollo flavor and by the way they have sour gummy worm flavor they have uh mm. great bubble gum they have uh baja lime that tastes like baja fresh from uh taco bell i mean it's so delicious <laughs> the best part zero carbs zero calories zero crash zero jitters into that's it right. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm around Alice, so I might be jittery today, but that's a, that's a whole that's a whole different thing. I'm jittery too. Don't worry, Mark. You're not alone. <laughs> Are you really? Are you jittery meaning Ella, darling? I mean, yeah, she's gorgeous. Well, and she's so sweet. And I don't she like if you lived in LA, we would be friends. You'd be like, let's go oh. shopping. How long did well, you live in back. LA, Ella? Um, eleven years. Um it was, I, y'all, I miss it. I love, I love Austin so much and mm -hmm. I don't miss LA right now, LA, right. but I miss the LA that, I, I miss the LA of my memories. Right. Yeah. The nostalgic yeah, yeah. LA in my dreams. Yeah. LA right now is not the LA you remember because I'm in Los Feliz and Hannah's in Redondo Beach. Both places mm -hmm. on a Saturday night would be so much fun. Oh yeah, they're going down to the strip, Bar Sinister, the Rainbow, Whiskey, Viper. I miss all that. Or Hollywood, but uh, yeah, you, it, it's it's all. It, it's so it's just it, it's it's dead. I did a YouTube video where I went down to uh, the Sunset Strip. Mm -hmm. Everything was closed. It was right after the Black Lives Matter. Everything's boarded up. It's horrible. But but yeah. half of LA moved to Austin, so I'm sure some of your friends are are, are over there, right? No one that I know though. Um... And believe me, like Texans, okay, so you know, when you live in LA, like you, you're not necessarily keenly aware, you just become aware that like, oh, San Francisco has beef with us? Why? Okay. Right. That sounds- It's a baseball thing. It's stupid. I guess, <laughs> but even in porn, even in like on porn sets in San Francisco, there's this like San Francisco, LA, like, I don't know, just a there's thing. There's a beef? There's a San Francisco, LA porn beef? in some circles but then you also eventually realize that new york also has this like thing where they're they're very condescending about la um right and especially like new york like journalists love to talk about la as though it's like some i don't know some version of new york that could never live up to anything you know worthwhile and it's like damn y'all too Y'all are all so, the salt fields coast to coast. Um, Everybody hates LA, apparently. Texas doesn't like California in general because they're moving here and they don't like it. Um, and that, I, I, I'm sure there's some extra like, well, they're driving up the prices of everything. And it's like, that's how life is, I guess. Like, people from mm -hmm. the Southwest moved to California and eventually drove up this. It's like, 
I don't know. It's just everybody hates California. But Austin isn't isn't like every everywhere. I think doesn't the rest of Texas hate Austin and Austin hates the rest of Texas? Austin is supposed to be cool. Austin, Austin is very Austin. cool. It is, yeah. but um, but still, I find that when you identify with a geographic sort of locality, um, you will hold that on the very highest tier in your heart. So any opportunity to sort of declare yourselves the winner over someone else, especially someone on like sort of a maybe more more national stage that gets a lot of recognition, um, you just do it, you know? Like, well, we're better than that town. I mean, it, it, even in small towns, in small, you know, towns that are nearby, they do it for, you know, high school football or whatever. But um, but yeah, Austin has been pretty cool. There are a lot of people from LA moving here. Nobody I, you know, I'm super close with personally, but but it is the thing. And can I tell you the reason I moved to Austin? Please do. So I um I actually almost went to college here, uh, mm-hmm. but I ended up going to UT Dallas instead for undergrad because I wanted to stay close to where my parents were um, in North Texas. And then my freshman, my first semester of freshman year, they moved to Austin where I could have gone to college, but I stayed to be close to them. Cool guys. And so anyway, I ended up coming to Austin a lot over the years. I'd visit them several times a year for South by Southwest right. and for Christmas and stuff. And I just love the city so much. And my family is, you know, I mean, I'm at my parents' house right now. I'm dog sitting for them while they're out of town. Um, Aww. Yeah. And so it's what kind nice of dog? Two Pomeranians and they will probably wander over at some point and I'll show you. Um, Please do. I'm, I'm about to get a Pomeranian myself here soon. I love Pomeranian. I have some Pomeranian right in here. Oh my God, they're like little teddy bears. They are, they're wonderful. And my brother <laughs> had a uh, half Pomeranian, half Chihuahua. I actually had two of them. Oh, wow, how cute. They're very, very, so very sweet. cute. But Austin, I, I went to Austin once and it was the, the, the least party day of the year, of, of, of all time because it was the first day of, of UT, uh, of, the, of the college. Oh, so yeah. nobody was out. And so, and I went to the Museum of the Weird and they had to give me a private tour because nobody was there. They're like, we've never given a tour just to one person. This is the slowest day we've ever had. That sounds ideal to me though. Cause I like, I do not want to party with college kids. That sounds like not fun to me. I, I would right. like to never hang out with college kids. We, exactly. I, I don't want to be hit on by college kids. Cause I don't want to have to say the words, darling, I could have birthed you. That's not fun <laughs> for me. Um, but but it is really cool even on slow party days like there's always when it's when we're not in a global deadly pandemic there's always mm-hmm. some kind of cool shit going on there's cool galleries there's cool venues there's bands coming all all the time um and just so many independent small businesses that do really great stuff whether it's amazing food or amazing coffee or just really cool weird ideas like there's a really mm-hmm. cool toy shop i hope it's still around um Ooh. uh yeah but it's really great also yeah. Yeah, There's a lot of good food, and gas is a dollar eighty-five gallon. Yeah, that's what happens when you drive across country from the west coast to the east coast. The gas prices just go down, 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 down. So you hit New Orleans when it's like ninety-nine cents a gallon, but it just goes down, 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 down. But uh, yeah, I just I, I I liked Austin. I, I Austin's like the Silver Lake of Texas, really. Yes, that's exa- that is perfect. That's a perfect uh, analogy. Yeah, so it's so and uh, our, our actually uh, you were like you were on with Santa Claus this year. We had I was actually thinking of having you back, but uh, we uh, we ended up uh, having a comedian uh, Maggie Mayfield who moved from Los Angeles to Austin. So if you ever see her name around, uh, check her out. She's very funny and tell her I said hi. But uh, I did also the last time you were on, I was going to dig this out. I finally did this. I got when I met you five years ago at AVN. Probably about five years ago today. <laughs> oh, this it's a virtual good. reality headset. Mm-hmm. Now, I want you to tell me, I know it's five years out of date at least because I got it five years ago, but how out of date is this model? Oh, wow. Well, it requires you to put a phone into it. And what, where does that, the phone go? The little sort of lip that has the branding on it. You're supposed to slide a phone right in there. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what that's for. Okay, because I had no idea. Yeah. So like you, uh... so yeah, you would like download and, and it's, I don't even think most phones these days even support 
that kind of VR because it's terrible. It was right. never good. It was like, I think there was this half-hearted idea that like, hey, maybe if we just send this to people and you know, they'll know that it's not good quality because it's just a piece of cardboard. That, that model, even though it is not made of cardboard is still what we would refer to as a cardboard VR model because it's modeled around Google Cardboard, which was mm -hmm. literally made of cardboard. You fold it together, you would put your phone inside and strap it in and you could put it in, set up like a like VR side-by-side -side 3D video and you know, look around, sort of. Um, yeah, I was wondering what good. I was wondering what this was. Now I knew you would know. Yeah, but it's just not good. It's like um, we're trying to sell this big, amazing technology by giving people the tiniest scrap of like barely a taste of it. It would be like trying to sell someone like a laptop by giving them like a 3D sticker. Like, see, it, mm. isn't this cool? Now, if we use real technology, you can actually do shit. And it doesn't suck and it doesn't make you sick. So um, even when you started with VR, this, this was probably outdated, right? No, I mean, it was still very much in date. It was just not good. And um, the, the argument for it, even though at the time VR professionals knew, like, this isn't good, this might actually make people not want to try things because they're going to think that this is representative of what a VR experience is like. And, you know, not to be elated because it wasn't very accessible back then. They were very expensive headsets. They still kind of are. But it's just... Even then we knew it was bad, but we hoped maybe people would be reasonable and think, okay, well, it, I got this for free. So obviously the real technology that you have to pay a few hundred bucks for is going to be an upgrade to this free piece of cardboard that I got. But, right. but yeah, right. it wasn't good. It's never really been good. Because Hannah, as, you, as you know, this is the first VR can, uh, can girl. And, and that's amazing. I think people are just very disrespectful and they expect everything for free. So shame on them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, especially so I've never porn. experienced VR porn, Ella. How me, at this point? And now's the perfect time to have it. We're in a pandemic, you're home. There's only so much porn you can watch on television. Now having like virtual reality would be amazing. Well, Ella's always been ahead of the curve. So she, she knew people would, she knew there'd be a global pandemic and people would be isolated in their homes. <laughs> and wanted there you go. Like this. Okay, well, not not so much that exactly, but um, but I I have been very enthusiastic about VR porn for it's been it's going on seven years now since I started in the in the VR porn industry, um, mm -hmm. which is longer than most VR industry people have been working in VR. But um, so VR porn, if you are not familiar with it, um, it's immersive and it's transportative and essentially you put on a headset, you're in a 3D environment where things are happening around you and they feel very realistic and you feel a sense of presence in the space and almost all of the VR porn that is, that is made, um, it's POV. So you feel like you are a character in the scene and things are happening to you. And, and there are uh, additional elements, like um, if you have a, a toy, like from Key or Levents, uh, which are two teledildonic toy companies, you can connect it to your computer via Bluetooth and then your toy will sync with the scene um, so it sort of reciprocates whatever you're seeing so that the emotions that you're seeing on screen happen within your toy. Um, you tell a dildonic seems like a word that you, Ella Darling, would make up. I did not make it up. I would have found something a little bit, something with a little bit of a better, um, like, mouthfeel. I feel like it's a little mm -hmm. bit clunky. You know, it doesn't quite go down smooth. I, I think um, right. it's kind of musical. You tell a dildonic. I like it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I've done everything there is to do in VR porn. I've done 360 3D porn where it's uh, 12 cameras, so two in each direction, up, down, left, right, front, back, creating a 360 degree global experience. Mm -hmm. um, I've done 180 3D, which is a lot more accessible and easier to create. And I think for porn, it's probably, um, it makes sense because you're not necessarily going to be sitting in your desk chair, like spinning around, like we jerking off in all directions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am, but uh, most <laughs> which might be fun though for some people. You get aerobic exercise at the same time. Hey, yeah, I mean, everybody needs it. Get your steps in. Um, well, that but would then be a good idea, though. I mean, you get rewarded with a certain kind of like sexual, like act if you do like 15, 20 push ups, and then you get a like, okay, here, I did my 15, 20 push ups, and then boom, here, you're rewarded. Okay, interesting that you mentioned that because the next thing I did in VR was um, I used basically volumetric video. So I used a Microsoft Connect to uh -huh. capture performers in space. So I would set 
I would designate on the X, Y, and Z axes, like the space I wanted to capture in front of the camera. And right. so it would ignore the rest of the room. It would just capture the performer. And then I could place her into a digitally rendered environment. And I use that to make a dating app, like a dating sim. So Ooh. you're you're with me in a rainy cafe and I'm in front of you and I introduce myself. And then you have three potential, it's sort of choose your own adventure. Like, what do you want to say next? And you can like say something nice, say something mean or say something like sexual. And if you say something mean, you lose points. If you say something nice, you gain points. And if you say something sexual before you have enough of like a rapport uh -huh. determined by points that you don't see, then I'm just like, I'm going to go. And if you get enough rapport points and then you say something sexy, like, you know, at an appropriate time, then it would reward you with a sexy I scene. It's like a sexy assassin. Kind of like a Leisure almost. Suit Larry. Yeah, yes, exactly. Like a combination. But um, it was really hard to create. And so that's, but it felt like you were really there with the person. So that's what led us to create the VR cams. So to the VR cams, we, we were the first VR webcam company um, ever, I think. So that's what made me the first VR cam girl because I co-founded the company. Mm -hmm. um, we licensed that out. Then I worked for a VR headset company. So I've worked for the, the hardware people also. Um, and now I work for a really cool company. Can I plug it a little bit? Oh, I, please go away. for it. It's called Vero Playspace. And we kind of do a lot of things because I work with visionaries who are brilliant people. Like every single person I work for, I just absolutely, like simply adore, which is so rare in a workplace. But we Vero Playspace is on Steam. It's a CGI VR sexy experience. We have... Uh, pre-recorded what we call dreams where you enter into it and there's a CGI character who sort of engages with you. It can be interactive sometimes. It it interacts with pretty much every teledildonic device, uh, teledildonic device on the market. And I even got to do one. So uh, a little over a year ago, I got to be, I, I wore the motion capture suit and I did the whole like black suit with little white ping pong ball style things all over me with like a, a thing mounted in front of me to capture my facial uh, right. expressions. And it was so cool. So you can hang out with me as a video game character. So that's Ooh. one part of it. The big goal is to have social spaces there where you can hang out with a partner or meet someone new and interact with each other's toys. So like mm -hmm. I could reach out and interact with your virtual genitalia and it would activate your toy. So I'm basically giving you a hand job. And it's, you know, that's the idea for that is just Ooh. A very accepting, consent-centered experience. But we also have a virtual cam girl, and she she camps on Chatterbait and Camp 4, and her name is Vex Ruby. And she is the, first of all, like, she's so charming, and she's so sweet, and she's so fun. She's really sexy, and she she's gorgeous and everything, but, like, she's just this wonderful creature, and um, she's a delight. And, um, and yeah, so we're working with, they call them lewd tubers in the space. I'm still wrapping my heart around the word lewd because mm -hmm. teledildonics is better than lewd too i just don't love it but vex ruby is going to make me love it because she she's amazing and i love her so check out vero play space and check out vex ruby i love her so much she's so great and good so yeah that's where i'm at now so that's all of the shit that i've done in vr all of the things that you know in adult in the adult spaces that are possible that people are doing and have been doing and because I've sort of bounced around and tried to, you know, dip my toes everywhere to get a sense of adult VR in every form, mm -hmm. I feel like that is sort of a a, a map of of porn in VR. So, well, thank you. Since since you always set me up with the segues really well, um, everybody's into your feet. We got that. We, we 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 got that with Santa Claus last time. You said dip your toe, so I'm going there. Um, I heard you on another show. Oh no, you on Vice. Vice interviewed you. Oh, yeah. and, and you were like blowing this interviewer's mind like she never I don't think she's ever seen porn she had no idea what you were anything you were talking about but you were talking about the the giantess fetish oh how women yeah. how... <laughs> sorry I, I I'm not king shaming whatever you're into cool it's more that like the people who have a giantess fetish that reach out to me think they're like pulling the wool over my eyes and try to get free porn out of it so anyway please continue how do they do that they, um, so they'll message me and be like, hey, um, I'm doing a project for school. And it's about this like, you know, 500 foot woman who um, does this, you know, pithy plot points. So what I need you to do is like put your phone on the ground and just like step on it a bunch. So it's like you're stepping on villagers, but it's for school. 
people mm-hmm. do that for foot fetish stuff too. Like I just, I, I'm in a, I'm in a class for like um, anatomy and we're studying feet right now. So can you like put your feet in front of a camera and like scrunch your toes and then flex them? Like, <laughs> can you do that for like three minutes straight and send it to me? Cause it's for a school project. Wow. Don't they know you're the smartest porn star? Or a, a, Doesn't a... take much to know when someone's trying to jerk off to you. No, I That's very that. true. They're very obvious. <laughs> well, just, just, just you know, uh, take your feet, dot, dot, dot. That pretty much gives it away. But I mean, some some guys are just are just into your feet. And that's fine. So am I. Join my OnlyFans, you know? Right. Well, we're, we're, we're going to get to that. But but then there's, there is there is a fetish. And I, I just recently discovered it myself. And it was like, okay, whatever. But guys just, they want, they fantasize about being really small and having women step on them and you know about this Anna? I do definitely know about it usually it's men that are in high positions like corporate positions and they're always in charge and when they want go home they want to be you know dominated well dominate is one thing but then they want the woman to be like 20 feet tall oh yeah yeah um I went to school with one of my good girlfriends and she was six foot four in 10th grade and there was a couple football players that had a fetish for her so i i just uh, i but you were telling the vice reporter about this and she was it was blowing her mind she had no idea what, what what you were talking about it's something it's stuff that sort of surprised me along the way that now i'm just like oh yeah giantess oh did they want you to like pick up their little wiggly bodies and put them in your mouth and pretend you're eating them up well, that's another because one they, the guys, they guys want to be eaten up yeah, there's so there's vor, there's giantess, there's foot fetish, and, and almost every fetish. And again, when I speak of these things, I'm not shaming the fetish. It's just some of the people who have interacted with me about them in a way that has been really sleazy. That's my negative reaction to it. So I love, mm-hmm. like, I have fans who are into these things, and I am so thrilled to make that content for them. But mm-hmm. yeah, and so there are all these sort of like um, just tendrils of different fetishes and they frequently sort of like intersect and intertwine and, and it's just this this beautiful tapestry of of fapping to cool things and and I love it and it's very fun like it's fun for me as a performer to to make that content because it's such a nice break from just the norm um but yeah I know you have a Batgirl outfit I'm sure there's superhero uh cosplay guys are into yeah. that and women are into that yeah yeah for sure i Rule 34, man. Huh? Rule 34. People are into anything. If, if you can think of it, there's porn of it on the internet and the extension to that, that I maybe it's a separate rule. People want it. I am with you 100%. I'm, I always say if, if you can think about it, somebody's out there doing it. Is there, an, is there, any, are there any other fetishes that surprise you that, uh, that you come across in your illustrious career? The one I would say that was most shocking to me was balloon popping. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah. 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 And the thing is, with the with the fetishes, like the further removed a fetish is from like tits and genitalia, um, the more innocuous it can seem. And because of that, even though they're completely sexualizing it and it is it's absolutely pornographic to them. Um, they think that they can sort of like con you into giving them free content because like it's not real porn, but it's pornographic to you. So either you want your fetish to be accepted and respected, in which case you should treat it like a fetish and pay for, you know, private content, or you don't. I don't know. It's this weird, this weird mindset, this cognitive dissonance that is present in, in certain folks. But there were some folks who would walk around the floor of AVN asking performers to like, do I don't know, squeeze a balloon until it pops and they would record it. And they're making money off of that or at least jerking off to it. But because it seems innocuous, it just seems weird. So many people will do it and it's like, you're here to make money. If you're fulfilling someone's fetish, they need to pay you for it. And if they don't wanna pay you for it, they shouldn't have it. Like that's it. Right. So that was the one that surprised me. I almost did it. I didn't really want to cause I don't wanna, I don't, that, that sounds viscerally unpleasant. I mean, more than anything, but my, um, my mentor at the time was like, no, you're not doing that. They need to pay you or they can't film you. I was like, oh, okay. She taught me a lot. Smart, smart. Yeah. Very um, smart. But uh, as, as speaking of that, uh, I guess the, the actual awards are today, the AVNs, and you went to XBiz yes, uh, last week, but obviously it's virtual. Yeah. You missed that, that fan interaction? Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. I missed the fan interaction. 
I miss, the thing I miss most about ABN is me and all of my, my really, like probably a lot of my friends, like my, some of my closest friends are all hanging out. We're, it's work, it's like a work vacation. So right. at the end of the night, you can just like walk around like the restaurant, the bar, the other bar, just meander around and you'll find people that you really enjoy spending time with and you just never really get to because you only see each other on set and then you're working and you know everyone's so busy it's so hard to make time to to spend time together but it's just like it's like porno summer camp almost and then it ends with porno prom and um yes I could get dressed up in glamorous I could do my hair and makeup and put on a sequin gown and just like take photos of myself I could do that anytime and I don't the thing that makes it special AVN is that you have crowds looking upon you and it makes you feel so like I don't know just it's it's otherworldly and all of your friends are dressed up too it really is like prom um and then just seeing the photographs and and being photographed in perfect lighting the next day like I'm never going to photograph myself the way that the photographers on the red carpet do and um there's just something that feels wonderful any light Ella you know that well that's sweet of you but but no it's just it's something it's the there's like a mise en scene too it's just it's just something you can't capture unless you're actually there. And um, right. yeah. Well, there is an energy. And, and like I say, uh, last year when we were talking to Santa, you were like, uh, you bump into people and you forgot that you fucked them on film. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you actually get to know them when you're not fucking them on film. Yeah. And that's really like, there are people who like, I've had chemistry with on camera. We, it was fine, but like, we're probably not going to hang out and, and catch up, especially because, you know, I lived in Highland Park and they lived in the Valley and like, I don't even want to leave my neighborhood. I don't want to drive out of my neighborhood for like an important task. So it's just really hard to prioritize, but, um, but yeah, that made it really special. Mm. And last year's uh, photographs, uh, I think it was at Expos. You had that dress. You look, you look, you look stunning. Thank you. I actually you got were- it for Christmas. You're very, oh, that's right. And you were vamping on the red carpet. It was, you were really, you were really going to town, but uh, it, it's, so it kind of, so how was x virtually? Um, nothing is ever the same as being in person. x had some challenges this year, um, just with their, the platform they were on, but by and large, it was, it was pretty decent. Um, I felt like you know, the, um, I, uh, I moderated the panel about VR porn and we had a really great discussion and really good insights. And, and I really, I liked it. I also liked the sort of like peek into people's homes and, and, you know, the VR panel, like everybody has like really cool shit. Like my right. friend, Anna, her apartment, like everything has, uh, these awesome led, like rainbow lights and like Ooh. her her her, not even, her house is like decked out. it's basically like a cyberpunk wonderland um and she's also brilliant so mm-hmm. it's like getting to hear her speak while she's in this amazing like palace of cyberpunk brilliance that she's crafted it was just that's one of the things that i liked about it just being able to see into people's spaces which sounds creepy now that i say it so no i i, I know what you mean especially well i mean you know, I, I would say uh, most, uh, you know, most, if not all the porn stars, we've got all fans and they, 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 they do it in your, in their house. And you were doing that for a long time. So. I have only been doing it since September. I, I avoided it for a long time because I was like, ah, oh, who the fuck wants to see me? But, but no, I started doing it and it's been really fun. I really like it. But before you were, you were camming and you were doing uh, VR in your house and you had a whole set up. So, and I'm sure, you know, now that you've just moved, you're still getting everything together, but uh your Highland Park apartment had was was you had your own you had a whole space there and it did it was really cool um yeah I am I you know I love my apartment in Austin like I every other place I've moved into it's taken me like months to actually settle in and and unpack boxes and do all the things but living here is like this is my little space and I want to love it and thrive in it and it's so cozy and homey I wish I I wish I could be broadcasting from there so I could show it to you but um (laughs) next time but yes. no, it's, it's just so, uh, I love it. It's so good. I just love being there. It's such well, but, a And also place. you have uh, Texas Tattooed. Yes, uh, we do. And, uh, th- there it is. Yes, yeah, Texas Tattooed on your shoulder. Oh, wow. And you're always, you, nobody rocks a pair of cowboy boots like you. And and I was telling you, uh, Hannah, uh, so I posted a picture. I, I, uh, Hannah, I, I asked Hannah which one to choose that I'm going to post for social media. And she's like the one where you're turning your back because... 
you got such a beautiful back. Oh, that's so mm-hmm. sweet. Thank you. I didn't you know too. that was a thing, Hannah, because I, I oh, it's a big it. thing. Yeah. No, even men, they love it. That beautiful line down your back is so feminine and sexy, like Nicole Kidman. Beautiful. Oh, that is so sweet. Thank you. I need to see this photo. I need to see what you're seeing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, text it to you. You can see it after the show. But it, it, but that it's it's you over your shoulder, and I wanted to get the tattoos because you have the Texas, and you also have the the Dewey Decimal of Harry Potter, which is problematic in a couple ways. But hey, fuck J.K. Rowling, but that story doesn't belong to her anymore. It belongs to the fans, and, and we make it our own. And one of the most amazing Harry Potter fan films, um, Severus Snape and the Marauders. Severus Snape is played by my incredibly beautiful friend Morgana who is a trans woman herself. And so she took that wow. story and she made it into something that people love even more in mm-hmm. spite of JKR's bullshit, transphobic fuckery. Right, but, but, right. And Eddie, Eddie Izzard said that he didn't think she was transphobic. I don't give a shit with what Eddie Izzard said. Eddie okay. Izzard doesn't okay. get to speak for the world. All right. You know, like it, it doesn't, like Eddie Izzard can decide that that is not what, is it they or she? It's a she. She. Okay. I wasn't sure which pronouns uh, she went with, but yeah, she's she's she has she pronouns now. It doesn't have to be offensive to her if her brothers and sisters and non-binary folks who also occupy that space are like, no, actually, it is though. Like, it doesn't have to offend you, but it offends a lot of us. If it offends, like, I'm not trans. When my trans friends say, no, fuck that person, I'm gonna be like. I hear you and I'm not going to argue with you because it's not my fucking place. You know? But still, Harry Potter was a part of your life and so was the Dewey yeah. Decimal System. And you can't... You and can't you know what? It. Melville Dewey sucks too, if we're going to be real. Oh, no. We talked about that last time. Yeah. So Mel- like... Because you went to the you went to the college where uh, Melville Dewey, who started the Dewey Decimal System, uh, went. He and apparently it. he was an anti-Semite and there's a few things wrong with him. But... What but else? in any case, it's about the the community. It's about the friends we made along the way. Yes, because that and uh, that was the first time I met you five years ago. You showed me your tattoos, and I was and I was in trances. I still am, but uh, also <laughs> I, um, um, I I I was even more in trance because, as as usual, I did a lot of research and was looking at and and these are all old. I know these are all old because you haven't done scenes in a, in a long long time. But you did a parody, a porn parody. I don't. I can't believe I didn't see this before. Of the room. Yes, I did. The the movie The Room. Hannah, are you familiar with The Room? The movie The Room. It sounds familiar. I think I would have to see like a YouTube clip of it. Oh, I encourage you to see a YouTube clip. I'm going to send you YouTube clips. Okay, this please do. This is the do. shittiest movie. I love. You know, I love bad bad movies. This is the shittiest movie of all time. Amazingly so. Yeah. I have sat so many people down and said, wait five minutes. If, you, if you're if you not entertained in five minutes, I'm going to shut this off. Nobody's ever had me shut it off. It's the most <laughs> hilariously shitty movie you've ever seen in your life. James Franco did the movie about it. Disaster oh, that artist. movie. Disaster yes. Artist. I did see the Disaster Artist and I tried to watch the original, but I was like... I don't know. I was in a grumpy mood anyway. I wanted to throw something at my TV because I didn't like the way he spoke. <laughs> yeah, it was not very good. Yeah. So I, I didn't, I, I, I had to figure somebody did a porn parody of the room, but uh, I don't know. I just Googled little darling. I put it in so, Spank Bang or something. And then it's like the room parody. I'm like, the room parody? This is the greatest thing ever. See, I'm glad that you said that because most most people are like, well, isn't The Room its own porn parody? And it's like, <laughs> you're so funny. You're the first person who said that. Yes. It's like... I, I actually liked your room better than The Disaster Artist. Uh, I thought Disaster Artist was okay. But, um, and, and once again, Ella Darling is a great actress. Because I saw, I saw some S&M stuff that you did and you had a ball gag in your mouth and you were articulating so well in the Thank room you. parody, you were so good at being bad, but it was good. Thank you. Thank I you will watch. Much. I will watch your parody, though. That's one I will watch. That was, if not my very first, then one of my very first uh, boy girl scenes of, of the handful that I did in porn. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, now, are there other like shitty movie parodies, like a 
Birdemic parody or like a Dolomite parody or uh, so there's something else like a, more mystery science theater related stuff that I might see. Look, and you just parodies. go to Wood Rocket. Go to Wood Rocket. Leroy Myers is, <laughs> he's brilliant. He's a brilliant man. He's a wonderful, kind man, but he is so good at thinking of the most outlandish spins on, on porn parodies that like, you know, I was in Ask Venture time. I was Princess Bubblecum. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that show. It was very good, so. Who, who's a little, who's a little like a uh, uh, peppermint guy. He's evil, but he's cute. Oh, fuck, I don't remember. Um, I've been trying to remember. Okay, so real quick. So The Room, I actually got to meet the director at Comic-Con and I told him what I did. I told him like, hey, I actually Tommy started. In, yeah, Tommy was so. I was like, yeah, I actually started in, um, in a porn parody of your movie. And he just was like, oh, that's cool. And then he gave me a basketball. Oh. <laughs> Because they were giving out the room branded basketballs. No, I remember that. I I, I interviewed him a couple times at Comic, uh, not WonderCon, not, or Kamikaze, not non Comic Con, but yeah. Um, but actually, so the whole I I'm I'm not I haven't done much research. I haven't looked into it in a long time. But I'm pretty sure that a big part of the resurgence of the room was um, so my friend Michael Russole, who is one of the founders, creators, directors of Five Second Films, um, a comedic brilliant, like brilliant comedian of mine. He right. saw it and it was so absurd that he started inviting his friends to like, just like pack the theaters just to watch how absurd and, and bizarre it was. Right. And he has a lot of like, he's just a very good, like lovely person. So he has lots of friends. So he sort of like, he got so into it and so obsessed with it that like, I think he had, I think he might've been involved with the disaster artist to some degree. Again, I'm not, I'm not certain, but uh, like it's his passion, not mine, but um. But when he found out that I was in the room because he was so like into it and and really tried to get people into it, he was just like psyched that his friend did the porno parody. And which is funny because you look nothing like the girl in the room. No, no, it's a porn parody, so I don't. You have put to. out, you put on, you put on a really bad wig. Oh, it was real bad. It was so bad. <laughs> mm, it was not a cute look. No. Like both of you have, are, are fucking with the worst wigs on. I, mm -hmm. I'm amazed that they stayed <laughs> on. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure they actually came off a few times, so there were probably some cuts there. I can uh, that, that would be fun footage, though. It's just like the wig scene. <laughs> oh, I, I can imagine some of the outtakes that uh, from some of the movies <laughs> you did. But you started in, in, in S&M, mm -hmm. and then you went to Girl Girl, and then you went to Boy Girl, and then you went to basically camming. Well, I, I actually was camming early, early on. I just had kind of a sucky experience. So I stopped camming. And then I cammed for a few years when I was still doing Girl Girl um, out of a studio in the Valley um, that was like the back building behind a strip club um, with a bunch of offices. It was I think it was supposed to be the offices for the strip club and they just repurposed it. And um, so we had these cute little cam rooms and you know there were people that would moderate things so we didn't have to dick around and everything was really, really high quality. Um, and it was really, really fun too. I loved the people I camped with. I loved the people who ran the studio. I'm still friends with some of them. And um, it was just a really surreal kind of experience. There was an auto body shop next door and there was this guy we called ankle bracelet cause he had an ankle bracelet cause he was, um... <laughs> but like I was driving this uh, 1966 Ford LTD at the time that could get to the Valley from downtown or from the Valley to downtown. Um, could do both like, the same the same round trip maybe 60 percent of the time so there was a lot of issues and and our sweet ankle bracelet would fix my car for free all the time and we almost bedazzled the ankle bracelet but we didn't get around to it which is good because i think that would have been actually that probably would have gotten him in trouble so the bedazzling mm -hmm. would have set it off yeah i don't know anyway so i i did cam before i just when i got back into camming it was just the vr camming and i actually didn't do all that much of it i did it for my own company but then once we licensed it to cam for i only did a show occasionally i was mostly training cam girls and um like working on the marketing and stuff right and then you did uh you did the fetish stuff snm stuff and and i've seen you do uh, i've seen you uh dom and sub which is which is what which do you prefer I'm a switch personally. So, I mean, I kind of like both. Um, I like being a sub if the Dom is competent, mm -hmm. but I'm bratty. So like, if I no. don't respect you as a Dom, I kind of just want to pop off like, that didn't make any fucking sense. Do you want to try again? 
Okay. You want me to, I'm sorry, walk <laughs> me through your logic on this one. You want me to, what exactly? And I'm, mm -hmm. okay. You're okay, such well, an analytical me, sub. I was just like, uh, you gotta earn it. You know, every, like, I feel like there are some people who just decide like, I'm a dumb. And because I'm a dumb, okay, well, you think you're a dumb, but you're not in this situation, you're not succeeding. And I just think you could spend a little more time developing sort of your um, your character, your, your just everything, your approach. Um, Have you ever considered going into maybe directing? Um, kind of, I, yes and no. I mean, I did direct for, for VR porn. I directed like scenes and stuff for my own company. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it was sort of experimental. Um, I don't know that that's really the best role for me. Um, okay. I like I like management and I like like being creative and creative directing. But um, if I'm directing for somebody else, and I don't feel like that's a situation that gives me a lot of creative control, and um, it just yeah, I mean, I, I would, I could. Um, I don't know. It's just not not something that excites me. You know. I'll tell you what excites me is especially since I've been doing some research, but um, your orgasms on camera from what I've seen, they're amazing. They're, they, they seem very genuine. They're very, they seem very enthusiastic. Once again, uh, sometimes I, I watch porn and it's like, they don't seem to be doing enough or they're doing too much. And you never seem less than genuine. That, thank you. I would say, well, what are you watching? I'm watching you, like, I'm sure 10 year old stuff on X videos and spank bang. And well, let's like just that. walk that one back. Um, okay, so I guess it depends on sort of who the scene is with and what the style is. Because, yeah, most of the time, yes, especially girl girl stuff, I genuinely love women. Um, most of the time, it is genuine. It's, it's very few and far between that I've felt the need to, to fake it. And when I do fake it, like, I know how. Um, mm -hmm. The stuff that I shoot myself, I like, I know my body. I've lived in it for a while. So that's mm -hmm. all genuine. Um, it's very rare. Yeah, it's very rare that I've needed to, but I certainly have. There certainly are some scenes out there where it's just like, oh my God, I am right. I, I was supposed to be on the way home an hour ago. So can we just- Right. Well, you, you yeah, like ramp up and there's like this whole, yes, 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 and it's great. <laughs> and then some shrieking or squeaking, yeah. Yes, squeaking. yes, yes. My style, yeah. Yeah, so, so okay, those are, those are the real ones. Oh, okay, good. I thought, yeah. I thought so. I, I, I'm pretty good at that. I can, uh, I can, I can tell when a woman's faking. Not that. Every man can. Not, I mean, yeah, not. You can feel from the inside, right? If she's faking, because you like tremor, tremor. Or and I fake like myself, so I, I, I'm, who am I to say? Yes, but you know that they can tell from the inside, and if you know mm -hmm. how to do a kegel, mm -hmm. I know how to do a kegel. So I know how to fake. Yeah, we all know. How, like we're all professionals. We all know the fuck what we're well, doing. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm, not a prof <laughs> I'm not a professional. Like you're a professional, but and trust me, I'm uh, I'm I'm. I'm so out of practice. I'm, I don't even know if I have amateur status in that right now, but uh, it's been a few times because like I said, I, it takes me, I've said this before on the air, but it, it takes me a long time, mm -hmm. sometimes a, an excruciatingly long time. And I know when the woman's like, okay, enough of this. She's yeah. That and, I, and I've never had sex without a condom. So I know how to kegel it and, 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 and make it seem like, but and then run to the bathroom real quick so that she doesn't see that I didn't come in the in the condom. Yeah. So I feel like sometimes you come and sometimes you don't, no matter what gender you identify with. And like if you had fun, if you enjoyed yourself, like it's about the journey, not the destination. Um right. and I'm not saying like it's cool to just never give a partner an orgasm, but I feel like this expectation that like sex isn't over until an orgasm has happened just puts pressure on people in a way that isn't conducive to a positive experience. Like mm -hmm. just have fun and enjoy each other. And hopefully you make each other come. Maybe you exactly. don't, but as long as you're having fun together, that's what matters. And you hopefully know? you come together, but we'll see yeah. what happens. But, yeah. uh, and I was, uh, I was watching your Ted talk today too. And yeah. how did that, how did that happen? 
Um, they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do a TED talk in Southern Germany. And I was already going to be traveling. Like I was already, uh, I had to do a few panels and give demos at a film festival in North Carolina, then fly straight to Germany, no, straight to Amsterdam for a VR conference and give a talk there. Um, and then I was supposed to sort of like network and just like interact with the, the European VR folks there. But they had asked me, it was pretty last minute um, to come and do the TED talk in, in Southern Germany. So I basically got to Amsterdam, gave a talk the next day, flew to Germany at like five o'clock the next morning, already jet lagged from flying to Amsterdam and from flying to North Carolina and doing all that. And then um, I had that day to sort of like get my shit together and then right. the next afternoon give the TED talk. So they, I flew into Amsterdam and um, I was still sort of finishing up a lot of my notes on it because I, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for it. Um, and then they were like, hey, so we have a rehearsal tonight and a rehearsal in the morning. So you need to be there. Having done all this traveling, having spoken on multiple panels, multiple, like just giving talks, my vocal cords were fucked all the way up. Like it hurt, I was rasping and I was like, look, I can't, I don't know that I can do two rehearsals. And also I'm not good at rehearsals. Like I can rehearse by myself, but if I'm rehearsing to a room of like people sort of going about their business and maybe two people sitting and sort of conferring with each other. Like I, when I give a talk, I feed off of the energy in the room. Like right. it's, that's sort of, I was never great at public speaking until I started doing it and had to be. So I did the rehearsal and I was not good at it. And I could see the concern on their faces and they were like, okay. And then the next day I was like late to it because I was hella jet lagged and I was asleep while they were trying to call me. So I finally got out there. They have no, they're like concerned at this point. Right, right. I like sleep for most of the day until, um, until the next rehearsal. Like I put some chairs together in a study room at this business college and just slept on the chairs. Um, did the the next rehearsal a little better still not great still same situation they're like okay okay and so then I finally do it and and I was fine because I had a room full of people that I could sort of engage with and sort of yeah you know I could gauge their response and you know modulate my my points so yeah. it was fine at that point just the whole experience felt very miserable like waking up really early and I understand like what an asshole I sound like like oh they flew me out they, they didn't actually I flew, there, but <laughs> I had to go to Southern Germany from Amsterdam and I had to give a talk, a TED talk. Oh, oh poor Ella. My throat hurt, but I don't know. It was just like, it was just so much and I was doing so much and it was just a lot. Um, right. But so I did it. It was like, fuck yeah, nailed it. They were thrilled. They were like over the moon because their expectations were so low. You couldn't trip on them. Right. Um, and so then it was time Especially to leave. For, for, for an adult film star, I would imagine they. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So then it's time to go. And I'm like, okay, cool. I've got my bag spec. I've got my. Uh, anytime I leave any place, I'm like, okay, phone keys, wallet, vape, phone keys, wallet, passport, phone, you know, whatever. I'm like, okay, uh, phone keys, wallet, pa pass passport. It was lost. And you lost it your was passport? I had, so when I got to the, the hotel they put us in, the first room was like creepy. It looked like someone's grandmother's sitting room. There were like, there were cabinets of tchotchkes on the wall. Oh. Um, there was like, I mean, old like vintage furniture. It, it didn't look like a hotel. It literally looked like someone, like someone's grandparent stays there, like winters there or something. Um, and that room had like, the way, like in Europe, when they do like larger size beds, they just put two twin mattresses together my passport had fallen between the two mattresses. Oh so no. They tried to put me in another room that didn't exist. It was actually a dilapidated building. Finally, I got put into like this little dorm style room. It was fine. There was internet and a bed and I didn't give a shit. But yeah, so when we were leaving, we stopped at the hotel, they couldn't find it. And finally, as we we're about to pull away, this hotel worker comes like, wait, like brandishing my passport, like wait, wait. And, and uh, got it just in time, so. Yeah, that scares a, me to hear. <laughs> okay, ever since you've seen like movies like Hostel and then like Norman Bates' mom and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, what's going to happen? There was a doorway that wasn't a doorway. It was just a doorway when you opened the door, there was nothing behind it. 
Uh-huh. Uh-oh. I wonder what's so, behind the wall. Just chip it away. No, I'm just I know. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. And then I got back to Amsterdam and, and hung out with my friends and then I flew home the next day. But anyway, it was just a lot. It's just a, well, it's it funny because cool. the, 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 uh, the, the hack joke now is when, uh, in stand-up comedy, if somebody doesn't get a laugh, like, oh, I'm doing my TED Talk now. Uh, welcome but, to my TED Talk. Yeah. yeah. But then I, I, it was funny because I was watching the TED Talk. I've seen it before, but it's there were a couple of times you were, throw, you were throwing out jokes and it, it, you couldn't really hear the audience. So I didn't know if you, it, you were like pausing for the joke, but I didn't know if they were bombing or, or not. But then later I heard the audience better at, at when, you were, when you were being funny. They were, um, they were responding in the moment, but they were Germans. Right. So. But yeah, it was. I mean, the, the, the mics were all on you, so they. I, I couldn't. At, towards the end, I'm like, oh, they're laughing, and I. Did, I was, you know. But Germans I could tell, respond like, differently. Yeah, Germans have a very different response to comedy. I mean, in fact, that whole like region, they just. It's not that they don't appreciate. It's just that they they interact with it in a way that is not the way that American audiences do. Um, and I've been to Germany, God, a fuckload of times. Um, I love I love it there. I love Germany and I love Germans. Um, they're just they're cute. They're fun. But even Germans know that, like, oh, I'm German. No, uh, yes, I, yes, that was funny. Oh, and, and the sexy accents. Con- oh yeah, and they're not being <laughs> condescending. They just like they enjoy things internally. They don't like raucously express themselves in the way that um, you sort of get used to in America. Well, I, I'm part German, so uh, yeah, I, I, I understand. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, uh, how um, have you? Um, as far as the, uh, I was going to ask you last time. Because you, you're a nerd from way back. Yes. And now everybody's a nerd. Does that bother you? Are you one of these people like, uh, do you not like the nerds from lately? Or what, what, what's your opinion on that? Because you, do, do, you were a dungeon master before anybody was into it. Well, I, I played d and I, I have only damned ones. Um, no, like, look, I felt a little isolated when I was, you know, much younger when I was like in high school. And um, I mean, a lot of my my friends in high school were also into d and My friends in high school were also into nerdy shit. So I never I never felt that isolated, but it, it was not something that you could really engage with people on sort of a, a larger uh, conversation, a larger discourse. Um, I now, I don't know, I think it's awesome. Like, because yeah, nerdy stuff is fun and awesome. And, and I'm, I'm honestly so glad that people are embracing it and, and finding the joy that I found in it. And I love seeing people discover it and be like, oh my God, how did I not know this is so great and so fun? I was like, yes, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Like I just- Okay, so, gate- you, so yeah. I'm not so into gatekeeping. Welcome, yeah, welcome to the club. The more the merrier. Yeah, like I, I was brand new to it when I liked it. When I started liking d people had been loving it for decades. So like if I hadn't been embraced by people who were already into it, it wouldn't have been a place that I felt comfortable and, and was able to find this this joy. So I don't want to make other people feel alienated in the space that I love. I want to share it with them. I want to encourage them because I don't know. I just think that's cool. Like well, when yeah. you go to Comic Con and all these places, do you think? And you know, and everybody's just so putting on the nerd. You think it's like uh, it's it, it's too much, or uh, yeah, just keep growing. I don't know. It sounds like you do though. What do you think? You want to talk about? I don't it? know. I don't know. I just. Uh, I, 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 it's a weird thing for me. I think, um, the, I, I, I think it's changing a little bit. Uh, obviously the, although I don't know, everybody's being so isolated now, uh, maybe it's not, but, uh, you know, like I think the culture, it's so mainstream now that I kind of miss the other stuff that was mainstream that you can't get now. I'm trying to think of non-nerdy things because I'm a nerd. I don't know. Uh, well, you, you know what I think it is? I think just like how we pioneered the way to have piercings and tattoos and hair color, everybody does it. Now, to be geeky is very sexy because you have Elon Musk and then you have Bill Gates and they're cool and they built all these things so no one's going to laugh at you because they're going to be like, oh, yeah. you're going to be a multimillionaire. Yeah, well, it's I, something that you can just discuss. And it's like, yeah, this is something that I enjoy. And people are like, oh, yes, that might not be my thing, but I've heard of that. And you don't have to sort of defend yourself mm-hmm. or, or explain yourself. It's You're just, respected. It's, yeah, yeah. And I like that. And I, for me, it was never, 
I didn't enjoy it because it was something that no one else was doing. It wasn't the mm -hmm. exclusivity for me. It was the the joy that it brought, it brought me personally and, and the way that it allowed me to connect with people in a way that made sense to me. And mm -hmm. that's what I like. And I think that a lot of people who have previously scorned it probably did so because maybe they wanted to try it out too, but they didn't feel they were in a social place where they would continue to be accepted if they did. And mm -hmm. so that's something that I like, that people are able to take a chance on things and not worry about you know, if I do this, um, people in my work are going to think I'm weird or someone's going to think that I'm like a de facto Satanist because they heard at their church that this thing is Satanism or, or what have you. And so um, if someone's into it, I mean, if someone's doing something as an, an affectation, like I'm always going to be like, okay, well, good for you, I guess. But I mean, I feel like that, I feel that way about pretty much anything. Like you go to England for spring break and you come back with an English accent that's you're affecting that accent and you're doing it for a reason that probably is pretty personal to you and while I might think it's a little I don't know gauche I'm not like it's not mm -hmm. my journey um I think that the people who are genuinely enjoying nerd culture you you can't fake enjoyment I mean you can we just discussed that you really can um but right. I don't know on that level like if you're if you're pretending to like it because you want cool points, if you really need cool points that bad, then sure, have them. And if you're just enjoying it because it's enjoyable, like yeah, welcome. Let's well, hey I, I, now that I, yeah. I think more Sorry. of my problem is that people used to bully us, mm -hmm. and now we're doing the bullying. Not we are, but some of some of the people that were bullied are now doing the bullying. That, that bothers me. And the other thing that bothers me is nobody can really, and this is just a part of, you know, culture and uh, the computer age and everything else, but people can't enjoy a work of art just for the work of art. It has to be dissected and analyzed and Easter eggs and this and that. Nobody can, I mean, you, you know, um, we're watching a Wonder Woman movie. There's no way to enjoy it because it's just been so dissected online, whether it's good or not. I hear you on that, and I, that bothers me too. And what I, I just, man, I, I we're in a deadly pandemic. I just right. had like a month long panic, several months long like anxiety episode because I live in America, and like uh -huh. I just don't read it. Like everyone has something critical to say about fucking anything, no right. matter what it is. People will complain about a product on Amazon because they didn't like the way it was shipped. Like that's not the product. People have like, yeah, people are gonna bitch about anything. Just don't engage with it and it can't bother you. And I don't like the way that people are like deciding that, you know, I was here first, so I'm gonna bully people out of enjoying it, which is why I don't engage in it. Right. Um, and, and yeah, like, yeah, I got some flack for the stuff that I was into in my youth. I'm very glad that it's more accepted and the people who are now coming into that and starting to learn to like it themselves don't have to face that. Like, I love that they can come here and enjoy it for the sake of enjoyment and not have to worry about, you know, the, the people who are going to be shitty about it. Like, I, I don't know. So yeah, that's well, a very long answer to your question. Yeah. Very, very well said. Although I will tell you, I went to a Star Trek convention and uh, did a couple videos about it. And I was like, I wish I got into this. I mean, these people are just so cool. I wish, I mean, I, I liked Star Trek when I was a kid, but I was never like that into it. And now I wish I was. It's the people, yes, I, I see I'll show that. You. Okay, I think I already showed this. This is, um, this is Vulcan, so. since we're on the topic and we've been talking about Right, topics. right. Well, I, I, have, I have a theory that you're Vulcan, but uh, there's something otherworldly about you. There, there always <laughs> has been. I, I, a couple things before we go, and I, and I, I appreciate, Appreciate you uh, sticking with us. Uh, I do too. Tell Hannah now, when you first started doing VR and you were experimenting with green screen, your <laughs> eyes are so brightly green. <laughs> tell Hannah the story. <laughs> okay, so the first iteration of the VR cams that we did, we used to green screen. So um, we were continuing on with the idea of like capturing the performer's body and, and placing them into a digital environment. Um, uh -huh. But because my eyes can be, not all the time, only sometimes, but when it happened, it was unnerving. My eyes would get keyed out. And so my eyes would match the background, like the digital background. And it looked 
demonic. It looked so <gasps> unsettling. Um, Aww. And it wasn't so an all the time thing, but it was a, enough of the time thing. That, and, and so that was sort of why we changed from doing that to doing just a, we would create a 3D 360 capture of the space and then mm -hmm. overlap, like overlay the video on top of it. So it was not seamless, but almost seamless, like enough to work um, because, because of that. And as, as we've seen with the Bernie Sanders memes, it's been perfected <laughs> now, but uh, no, I, uh, I think I would. I think I would like to see that footage. I think I have a new fetish. I think that's the the eyes blending in the background. I think is a new fetish. Oh man! Because I remember no. Because I remember when I used to when I was a kid when they had the the weathermen and sometimes they would wear like a green tie or something. It would just blend in. They didn't even know. That's just yeah. You say it's it, it sounds demonic, but it sounds that sounds pretty sexy to me. I don't know, but uh, it does sound pretty sexy. I agree with Mark. But uh, and. Uh, how long before we have holograms and that technology? I mean, we already technically do to some degree. It's just, it, it's gimmicky more than anything. Um, Cause I, I was just know. watching the uh, sci-fi classic from the nineties, Virtuosity hmm. in, in, in preparation for this. And, you know, uh, when are we gonna have like just Ella Darling just kind of, you just push a button, she's there and things happen. Um, like Total Recall. Well, like Tupac uh, sings a lot at, at Coachella, like that kind of thing. Like right again, it's possible. I mean, there are small mounted, like small um, devices that can do something kind of similar on a smaller scale. Uh, so we already have it, I guess is, is what I'm saying. It's just, the question is when are we going to have the technology? It's when are we going to have enough of a consumer base to justify manufacturing it on a on a large scale level? I, I don't know that answer because I'm not great with customer um, data and statistics. But I believe I hope soon. I believe this if this pandemic, which doesn't get any better, which I don't see it getting any better, I think it's going to come out pretty soon, probably in the next three to five years. I, I, I can see it. Maybe. And how's the pandemic? Go ahead. Oh, no, please. This is what sucks about Zoom. I hate Zoom. <laughs> I, I, I have the, I have the uh, and we've had such such a great time, but this would be so much better if the three of us were right in person. But uh, mm -hmm. I have a theory that Zoom caused the pandemic because I never heard of Zoom before <laughs> the pandemic. And now everybody fucking uses it. So I don't know. And they got yeah. like $14.99 a month, so. Oh yeah, we have Zoom parties. Like my girl, my girlfriend Mary and I. It's it's fun. <laughs> For her birthday, we had a Zoom party. Mark was there. But what I was going to say was, uh, um, what was like? Oh, has the pandemic now helped the not only Vero Club but the OnlyFans? Now everybody's home alone with nothing to do. So yeah, I would say that the pandemic has um, has. Uh, it's hard to find a, a not shitty way to say this, but I, I would say that the VR industry in general has um, been able to thrive a bit more because so many people are, are at home, stuck at home and, and just wish they could be someplace else. You mm -hmm. know, um, I've, I mean, I've spent time just hanging out in um, Google Earth VR or Google VR. I don't remember the exact name of it, but basically it's, it's you can go anywhere in the world that Google has like photos, like Google map photos, and right. you can just drop in, like, where am I at right now? Someone uploaded a, a photo, like a 360 photo of this, um, you know, this museum, and I can feel like I'm in this museum in Azerbaijan, yeah. and that's cool. Um, and it's just, it's been really fun. Like me and uh, my former roommate would play this game where we would choose uh, uh, the capital of a country. It had to be the capital. and the other person would have to close their eyes and then we would put them, put the headset on them and they couldn't look at the, the location and you'd have to like travel around and like drop into different locations and guess which country capital you're in. And uh -huh. um, it was really fun. It was really cool. Yeah, that does uh, sound like fun. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll put the, the goggles back on. But <laughs> um, no, and, and um, your fans, are the VR fans a little clingier because, you know, they than your than your regular fans because they think they're really in that environment with you or it doesn't make a difference um i think the vr fans and the general like i think 
that behavior is very dependent on the personality type, not necessarily the medium through which they're engaging. Um, and so I would say it's, it's really not a huge difference. If someone is just the kind of person who is inclined to be a very sort of someone who is maybe less aware of boundaries or who thinks that boundaries aren't for them, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter what right. form they're reaching me in, they're, they're gonna sort of have that behavior. But for the most part, my friends have been really, really cool and really, really nice. And they surprise me like a lot with just how, how kind they are. Um, uh-huh. Like, I'll, I don't know, I'll like say some dumb self-deprecating thing about some post I make and I'll get like five messages like, hey, I just want you to know, I really like it. I know that you say these things, but, but we really like this. We like it when you post your video blogs. We just like to hear about your day. And that sounds really cool. And it's like, oh, babies, thank you. Well, I think so that's I can guess everything. Yeah. I think Hannah might agree with me. I think it's a reflection of the performer. Oh. Yes. And well, uh, I don't think not every performer would get those type of fans, but um, this is what I've been waiting for the whole time because I'm not subscribed. What happens on your OnlyFans? What could people expect? And okay. what can people get for their money? <laughs> um, so I post, I, like pretty much every, all the photos I post, I shoot myself because I, you know, we, we're in a pandemic. I can't really go out and shoot with people. Um, but so like I do photo sets like once or twice a week and then I'll post those photos throughout the week and then throughout the coming months because I don't want to inundate people with the same set. So I post several photos a day. I'll post a video blog, either in my underwear or topless at least, um, usually two to three times a week where I just like talk about fun shit that happened in my day or I like explain the meaning behind my tattoos or I share a, a funny story. Someone, you guys know the app next door? Yes. It's like, mm. okay, so it's like a thing where you have to verify that you live in a specific location and then you can engage with the people in your, your neighborhood. Right. Um, so I was in a buy nothing group. Um, no, it was on Facebook. It doesn't matter. A buy nothing group where it's like, hey, I have something to give if you want to come take it because otherwise I'm going to throw it away. Or like, hey, I need this thing if anyone has it to spare. And it's this really nice way of like helping your community. Some dude posted about having like eggs, like fresh eggs as chickens that his chickens laid. And I was like, I would love some of those eggs. That sounds awesome if you have some to spare. And he messages me and he's like, hey, did you still want some eggs? And I was like, yes. And he was like, do you live in Austin? And I was like, yes. And he was like, okay, what would you say to a date in exchange for some eggs? This motherfucker tried to barter a date with me for some, for a dozen eggs. Oh, you're like, ah, oh, no, I'm gonna go to the grocery store. Thank you. I could, like, I could pay seven dollars. These are fresh eggs, though. I could pay seven dollars at a farmer's market. <laughs> like, that's not that's. He would fail your vir- your vo- virtual reality uh, dating test. In oh, lickety split. Yeah. So anyway, I talk about dumb shit like that and just like whatever's going on with me. And then I'll post like, you know, PPV videos that I make that are like JOI and Dami stuff and I don't know, just whatever strikes me in the moment. So yeah, that's kind of what I post. Um, And I really like it. I didn't start doing it until I ended my last company. I was about to move. I I was about to have this very large gap in sort of social engagement because I wasn't going to be living with my roommate business partner anymore. We weren't working together and I didn't have my personal company to work on. So Mm -hmm. I sort of turned to OnlyFans as like a way to to occupy myself. And it's just been really fun. And the people have been so nice. And I, uh, it's been really good for me. Just like not, like on a personal level, you know, Mm -hmm. just really good people. That's great. That's good. I'm glad that you're, I'm glad that you're uh, connecting with your fans that way. I'm glad you're connecting with people in the world. Uh, and uh, I, like I said, I, I unfortunately, I'm glad uh, the good thing about Zoom is that you're in Austin and we can, we can talk to you. The bad thing is uh, I don't get to feel a, an Ella Darling hug. You are the best hugger uh, in the world. There you go. Virtually. I wish I could give you a hug, Mark. You're uh, a very good hugger yourself. Oh, um, he is. He is, isn't he? He's because he's so warm and sweet and kind and non genuine. And yes. yes, makes you feel good. He definitely does, and he definitely loves and cares about his friends very much. So, and, and, and by the way, I, I didn't think anybody could shut me up, but the two of you did. So keep going. 
<laughs> so what were you going to say, Ella? Kind and lovely. Um, I'll text you about it. Um, what I do want to <laughs> say is, um, if okay, if anybody watching, listening, engaging with this, if you follow me on OnlyFans, because you found me here, if you mention the the podcast name, the Dark Mark, the Dark Mark, um, I will send you a special photo set that I'm going to assemble that is me in my like gothy slut. Like, Ooh. so I have I have some that are like, like I have this like blood splattered background. It's just it's just a room divider that I have in my house, but it works. Oh, um, so yeah, I will send you a photo set. Yes, a special goth photo set. If you mentioned the Dark Mark show, and I guess we'll, have, kind. we'll wrap it up with that. Ella, uh, plug everything that you have to plug. Um, okay, check out Vero Play Space. It is on Steam. Uh, it's Vero uh, oh, Vero dot okay just look up Vero play space um check out vex ruby on chatterbait and cam4 check out uh my only fans it's onlyfans.com slash ella darling i'm basically slash ella darling on whatever social media you're into twitter insta only fans i'm 34 that's really all i use so yeah um and yeah Vero play space vex ruby and check out my only fans mentioned the dark mark show and special exclusive goth slut photo set for you. Ooh. Yeah. Hannah, did, did, did I tell you I was awesome? What, what did I say? <laughs> she is definitely awesome. And text her my phone number so we can get in touch next time you're in town. Yes, yes, I am. You know what, I'll, I'll do in a pinch. All right, awesome. <laughs> and uh, and now follow Hannah at Hail Hannah Buck 666 on Instagram. Uh-huh. And also check out her other podcast, uh, Vegans Uncensored. Yes. Ooh. And veganduncensored.com. And, uh, and also I'm trying to do Inked Model 2021 again. And I really means the dearest to me to get somebody that was born with a disability that was born different on the cover and be a cover girl and to help so out. Important. Yeah, everybody else. So you can go to my Instagram, click the link on my bio and vote for me. It would mean the world. <laughs> Hannah was in the top four of her, of her, uh, uh, her section uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So let's bring her to number one and, and go to Ella and get the, get a gothy slutty set of pictures and follow goth comedian on all social media and everybody have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. Bye.